Today we're talking about fascial fitness and climbing stairs. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative, innovative, and fun Pilates tips and techniques that help to deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Jennifer Gianni, and today we're gonna to be talking about the ninja principle and stair climbing. Today we're talking about the second fascial training principle, the ninja principle. Previously, we talked about the same principle and we showed the elastic wall bounces. Today we're looking at another signature exercise for the ninja principle, stair climbing, simple. This is one that Robert Schlelf and Devo Mueller give as an example for the ninja principle. So again, we want this to be effortless and seamless and quiet. So every time we're going up the stairs, we're using a whole different amount of intention and tissue strength and coordination, right? And the same with every time we're going down the stairs. So we can, you know, think of it as our up the mountain muscles or our down the mountain muscles. And so every time that we're going up, most of us will tend to use too much energy, too much force, and have sort of a downward um, sort of quality to our movement if we're not really thinking about it. And then going down, if we don't have that right amount of integrity, especially in our back body, we free fall forward and again, just sit into our joints. So what we're looking for when we're going up and down the stairs is a very balanced, uh, tissue engagement around the whole spine, and also that sense of lift. So in the Pilates studio, we have a number of different things that we can do to build up different skill sets that will help us with walking outside or hiking or climbing stairs. One of the simplest things that you can do is foot balancing exercises. So release work on your feet that's actually going to create the right amount of strength and flexibility in your feet. So the feet are built for mobility. And if you've watched our site before, you've seen numerous different kinds of foot release work, foot strengthening work. But just to give it a simple take here, all you need to do is roll your foot on a tennis ball or a spiky ball, a, a ball that's right for your individual amount of tension that you're holding in your foot. Um, so here, you really want to be able to communicate with the ball under your foot. So you wanna try to cue yourself to have as relaxed as possible foot, bones, tissue, toes, heels, and leg as you roll the ball on your foot. The easiest thing to do at first is just go through the center of your foot. As soon as you have that mastered, then you can go to the inside arch of your foot or the outside of arch, arch of your foot. Every time that we take a step, we are moving into supination, pronation, not only in our hip joint, but also in our ankle joint, which is translated through the foot. And most of us have really, really habitual ways of standing and walking. And so usually we're just getting to one part of that hip or ankle joint. So this is a really good thing to do to remind the foot and then all the way up the chain of your original GPS, like how you're really supposed to talk to the earth. So after that, in the Pilates studio, what I like to do is go to the wobble board. This will give you an immense amount of information on how to climb stairs and how to go down the stairs, especially for that leg that you really have to stand on and really paying attention to, wow, how am I reaching into the floor with that foot and in what way am I communicating with my hip, knee, ankle as I go up and as I go down. So here, 
and take the wobble board of your choice, right, and start really, really slowly. Because part of this work, just like any type of training in Pilates, the, the main emphasis is on learning to pay attention. It's learning to pay attention to your habitual compensations, right? Where you want to go just naturally. And not judging that, but really noticing that because that's the first step in changing what you're doing. So here, I'm going to put my foot right in the middle I'm gonna try to be aware that I have all four corners of my feet and I have a little bit of balance on the wall. So going slower is actually gonna be a little bit harder, right? So I'm paying attention to the suction cup of my foot. I'm paying attention to having as much of a parallel leg as possible and then holding that as I come through and down, right? And then actually what's also really important on this is trying to lift my free foot and leg up and trying to balance for a moment as I go back, right? And this is really hard to do while talking also. So I'm going forward and back and paying attention to trying to create as much ease as possible in that standing hip knee, ankle, and foot as I'm balancing. Because a lot of us on one-legged work, which is walking, which is gait, that's one-legged work, a lot of us tend to grip a lot in the pelvis and around the upper and lower leg bone and the foot. So here you have a little laboratory for yourself where you can actually balance and move at a slow pace and really pay attention to what you're doing on that leg and foot as you're going up the stairs, right? And as you're going down the stairs. And as you're going down the stairs, remember we talked about we kind of free fall forward. So really pay attention to keeping the whole back line of your body really full. Right, so again, whoo, going up the stairs, right, keeping that upward lift, easy stand on my leg, and as I go down the stairs, I'm trying to keep the back line of my body really full, still paying attention to that back leg and foot. Ginger asked a question on Facebook about minor scoliosis and seeing more and more of this walk through her studio door. This is a great question, and I think that we all can relate to it as Pilates teachers. Uh, we do see uh, a lot of spines that look like, mm, maybe that's minor scoliosis. First, what I want to say is that you have to be really, really careful on diagnosing. We are not, that's not part of our job description to diagnose. So be really careful. Never ever say to a client, oh, I think that you might have scoliosis. That's not our job. If you suspect something like that, you might ask them to see their doctor, get an exam, but we are never, ever, ever should diagnose a client. Now that being said, all of us, scoliosis or not, we're humans and we have lateral deviations because we do habitual movement all the time. So every human that you have coming through your door is gonna have lateral deviations, which can look like minor scoliosis. Um, we have our beautiful model here, Casey. Casey does have scoliosis, she was born with it, and she does beautifully with it and for us today, she's really going to be sitting into her scoliosis, so she's going to really exaggerate that so we can, we can see it. Um, this is a very, very simple exercise, uh, touch and breath, to try to make your client with scoliosis or with a lateral deviation aware of their empty side and to help them fill up and become uh, more balanced. So we can see very clearly on Casey's back where she is empty and compressed and where she's full. 
And so we're using this image of maybe an old fashioned typewriter, right? Where she has really shifted her typewriter towards that left side. And so I want to bring a little bit more awareness to her right side. So what I'm trying to do is find those rib rings, and you can also see that she's more lifted on this left side also. So Casey, feel where I'm touching, and on your next breath, which can be an inhale or exhale, I want you to shift this rib ring more into your right side. Yep, and she's only thinking about that one rib ring. And then I'm gonna go down a little bit, and you can see my fingers are at an angle because she has that left side lifted. But I would like for you to shift this rib ring towards your right side, good. And then I'll go down another one and the angle gets less and less now, doesn't it? And I want her to shift, oh beautiful. And as she starts doing this, we're also gonna start to see a little bit more relaxation of that left shoulder blade. Because that poor guy up there, it's, it's really having a hard time with this open curve that she has on her left side, it, it actually builds a lot of tension in her connective tissue there on the left side. And then I'm gonna go down one more and ask her to breathe and lengthen into it. Nice. And I could even, if we had more time, do a few more um, and then even go back and I could even get a little bit more balance from just this simple touch and breath exercise. That's it for today. If you have any questions that you'd like to see answered in upcoming episodes, please comment below or on Facebook or Twitter or on our forum on the site. See you later and never stop learning. Welcome to the Pilates Show. <laughs> okay. <laughs>